Chernobyl is a lot more than just a perfect source for scary stories. It's a very real modern-day ghost town, haunted by disaster and downright creepy sights. Here are some of the weirdest things that have been found in Chernobyl's vast exclusion zone. The town of Pripyat is just over a mile away from the doomed Chernobyl power plant and was where many of the plant's workers lived and raised their families before the city was evacuated. Today, the city's most predominant looming feature is its abandoned amusement park, which looks just like it did more than 30 years ago, except a million times more creepy. The amusement park was originally supposed to open on May 1, 1986, which would end up being five days after the disaster at Chernobyl took place. But because the townspeople needed something to do while the reactor was melting down, Soviet officials were reportedly kind enough to open the park early for a short while on April 27, before the evacuation. So while it might not look like it, in a way, that makes that Ferris wheel one of the most dangerous amusement park rides people have ever gotten the chance to ride on. They were preparing for May Day, a celebration of spring. Never happened. Pop culture would have you believe that nuclear fallout plus wildlife equals, well, insane Silent Hill-style monsters. Funny thing about that, though, many animals living in the 1,000-square-mile exclusion zone around the Chernobyl plant don't have physical abnormalities at all. At least, not anymore. Reportedly, mutations in animals were much more commonplace in the early days of the disaster, and animals that were affected by it tended to neither live long nor reproduce. Researchers have found examples of dwarfism, gigantism, and glow-in-the-darkism in the local ecosystem, but these attributes have apparently been found only in plants, not animals. Most people try to get as far away as they can from nuclear disasters. Others think, cool, let's break in with a can of spray paint. On a number of occasions in the years since Chernobyl's meltdown, graffiti artists have snuck into the exclusion zone to make their marks, leaving eerily beautiful works of art on the abandoned buildings behind them. Some of the most striking graffiti work can be found in Pripyat, where artists painted creepy silhouettes of the town's missing residents. The effect is pretty striking. It's probably not an accident that the silhouettes are eerily similar to the permanent shadows that were left on the walls of Hiroshima after America attacked the city with a nuclear bomb during World War II. The Soviet government evacuated well over 100,000 people after the accident at Chernobyl, eventually resettling many of them in new homes outside of the exclusion zone. But some residents of the smaller villages just plain weren't interested in leaving, radiation or no radiation. Many of these older residents were set in their ways, having previously lived through the threats presented by Joseph Stalin and the Nazis, and they weren't about to run away from a danger they couldn't even see. So I should leave now because of something I cannot see at all. No. About 1,200 people, known as self-settlers, moved back into the exclusion zone in the months and years following the disaster. Some returned to their homes within a few years, while others only waited a few months. The government objected to the people's presence, but in the face of that kind of determination, what could they really do to stop them? It's not like they don't understand the risk. They know the soil is contaminated, but they grow food in it anyway. They raise chickens and hogs, despite the real dangers of eating meat that's been raised in the exclusion zone. Today, many of the people who remain are in their 70s or 80s, and they're still mostly healthy, and that's all the anecdotal evidence they need. The strangest creature found in the exclusion zone is the common tourist. According to Newsweek, as many as 12,000 tourists visit the exclusion zone every year. Is it really safe to do that? Of course. Sort of. One popular tourism company promises its guests hours of excitement in the shadows of Chernobyl, providing adventurous travelers with their own personal tours, dosimeters to check radiation levels, and even respirators. How comforting! In a practice that may be done with tongue-in-cheek, some hotels in the area even request that visitors to Chernobyl leave their shoes outside when they return to their lodgings for the night, out of fear that guests may track in radioactive contamination. Despite Chernobyl's reputation, excursions into the exclusion zone are apparently not all that dangerous, provided you take the proper precautions. Dosimeters rarely read high during a tour. According to Newsweek, the highest typical reading is similar to what you might get on a round-trip flight from San Francisco to Paris. And if you didn't know flying exposes you to low levels of radiation, well, you do now. Through the ages, one fact has remained true. In the right context, dolls can be really creepy, especially when they're hanging around nuclear ghost towns. It almost feels fitting that Pripyat is full of old, broken dolls, so many that there almost seems to be some kind of weird spin-off of The Conjuring being shot there. Wherever you go in Pripyat, it seems like creepy dolls are there to stare at you. They sit on windowsills, they're propped up on skeletal bed frames, they're sprawled out in piles of debris. Some of them are even wearing gas masks to add that extra layer of uncanny 
horror. While it's certainly tempting to think that everything you see in Pripyat is still pretty much in the same spot where it was left on the day of the evacuation, the truth is that tourists looking for an awesomely creepy keepsake rearranged most of them for the sake of taking spooky photos. It's suspected that many of the dolls may not even be Pripyat originals. There are plenty that look almost brand new, which suggests that tourists are mostly just bringing them along for Instagram's sake. The scariest thing in the Chernobyl area is obviously the plant itself. Until recently, the only thing standing between the failed fourth reactor and the rest of the world was the massive structure known as the sarcophagus, which was made from 14 million cubic feet of concrete and just over 8,000 tons of metal. Soviet workers known as liquidators assembled the original sarcophagus over the course of 206 days, in shifts lasting 5 to 7 minutes each, because any time longer than that spent near the reactors might just have killed them where they stood. But it's not like the shorter shifts were safe, though. Thousands are suspected to have died during the work, with many others being resigned to long, painful, cancer-ridden deaths much later on. The original sarcophagus was built in a hurry and structurally unsound, but it was the only thing keeping incredibly lethal amounts of radiation from being released into the environment. It was a temporary fix in need of a more permanent replacement. It took years for engineers to come up with another solution, a bigger, better sarcophagus built to surround the old one known as the New Safe Confinement. The the structure took 10,000 people to build, weighing 35,000 tons, and built to last for at least 100 years. When the new sarcophagus was finally complete, the builders needed 18 ships and 2,500 trucks to move it and all of its parts from Italy to Chernobyl. It was finally installed on November 29, 2016, more than three decades after the Chernobyl disaster took place. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about the world's most interesting places are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.